Hey everyone, it's uh, Pop Twigs here from Orlando, Florida, and joining me as my guest today, I have uh, Alpha Pop Roxas from uh, Knightsdale, North Carolina. Oh. How are you? Doing, I'm doing well, Twigs, and how are you today? Uh, I couldn't be any better and stuff, getting over sickness, and I'm always glad when that happens. Well, well at least you're enjoying your day at the beach. <laughs> I, I am, yeah, I'm right here playing on the on the beach in the dirt, in the sand. <laughs> so tell me about your pup name and about your your pup hood if the blue and black has any you know any signification of, of why you chose that color so pup uh, roxas and uh, your hood color well um the hood choice was more of a budget option i don't exactly have hundreds of dollars to invest in a mr s hood and i'm sure Hundreds of pups around the world can say the same thing. Exactly. Because the Mr. S hoods come to 200 bucks, give or take, depending on shipping, handling, uh, customization options, and whatnot. So, what I ended up doing is just choosing one the color hood that I like the best off of Wish, believe it or not. There you go. And surprisingly, this is a very comfy hood. It looks good. I, I like it. Normally, Wish and Timu and the others, they're just really, really cheap, but I actually like it. It's comfy, it's snug, stop being over the top tight. Mm -hmm. As for my pup name, um, the reason I chose the name Roxas is because I've always been a big fan of Kingdom Hearts and associated with the main character from the second game, Roxas. Mm -hmm. And growing up and always worrying about summer vacation ending and going back to school. And growing up, I was always being shifted from school to school to school with each new year. So I always had anxiety surrounding the end of summer. Because new school, new friends, I'd have to start over from scratch again. Okay. Um, so you wanted to know about the origin pup's name and hood color? Yeah, for me, yeah. For me, the colors I associate best with are purple and green. They have special significance to me because purple reflects the darker undertones of my soul, the depression, the anxiety, the... Asperger's, ADHD, the issues that I face in my day-to-day -day life, mm -hmm. pain and loss that I've experienced, and the healing that comes from it. Whereas the green signifies my love of the outdoors, nature, the hobbies I have associated with that. Camping, hiking, fishing, archery, just being outdoors in general. Okay. And now, together, they contrast beautifully while complementing each other's tone, and if I can share my screen for just a moment. Oh. Well, I can... I have this main fursona character that I have that's a purple and green wolf, and the colors contrast absolutely beautifully. I'm going to see if I can upload the picture to the Zoom call. Duh. And there, drag and drop, and send it to you, Twigs. Um, I believe your next question was, what's been the easiest and most difficult part about being a pup? Yeah, well, first, how long have you been a pup? I've been a pup off and on for a couple of years now, but um, it's kind of hard getting back into and staying in the scene because ugh, one second okay and i don't mind showing my face um staying in the scene because where i'm from nightdale raleigh is a very southern um conservative area mm -hmm. i want to say it's more that the area only has one or two good gay bars, and then the rest are each way to 
go to a bar for two for a few hours, get drunk, and then come back. Yeah. And as such, I have to make a lot of really tough decisions not to socialize, and that's not always a good thing. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. So, so it, you know, if you could change something about this community, what do you think you'd want to change? Honestly, let's see. One change that I'd make about the community is the stigma of you aren't a pup if you don't have this piece of gear or that hood or this set of paws from this company. For me, being a pup isn't so much about the things you have. Mm -hmm. It's not chain around my neck or a pair of boxing gloves and a hood. Being a pup is mental, not just physical. It right. doesn't matter what your pup self may look like, whether you have a muzzle like twigs or, in some cases, a full pup hood. I, I agree with you on that. Cause just... Just be, just be yourself, have no, fun, and you don't have to have the gear. So what advice would you give someone that's brand new coming into the pup community? I would say research the hell out of this scene. The history, the do's and don'ts, the etiquette, all of it. Being a pup isn't just putting on a mask and being a bully or pretending that you're a dog, lifting your leg and piss in the grass outside or chase squirrels. It's mm -hmm. not a bestiality fetish either, right. where it's animals fucking animals. There's a lot of subtlety and nuance to the culture and to the scene that if you're just in, you're not going to realize that right away. Yeah, and It's going to take knowing people both in and out of the scene. People who've either been a pup for years or just starting it like you. You gotta mm -hmm. find that balance and figure out what the pup scene means to you, but in particular, not just to you, but to those around you. Right. Because you say or do the wrong thing, and like any community, you'll be gone like that. Yeah. And I made those mistakes when I first started. So, yeah. All right. Well, well, kind of on a, a whole nother flip side of it, uh, what brings you the most joy out of pup play? And do you have a specific pup toy you like to play with? For me, it's not so much about the joy of being a pup. It's um, it's more the headspace of getting... For me, it's less about the joy of being a pup. It's the ability to get out of the human headspace and just relax to not have to think about stores or bills or responsibilities or job mm -hmm. it's more about just getting to zone out and just be a happy giddy playful pup Agreed. on my hands and knees sniffing stuff and exploring yeah so so what has it done for your mental health being being able to get into the pup headspace being able to get into the pup headspace has been indescribably helpful. It's kept me from a lot of dark places that others have tried to push me into and that life's tried to push me into. Mm -hmm. um, just to share just a little bit about my true self, my human... Um, I live with and help take care of a 60-something mother with brain cancer. Inoperable brain cancer. And hers is not a kind that you can just operate and get rid of. From what I understood, only, I think, 17 other people in the history have ever had this kind of brain cancer. So... Being faced every day with her mortality is humbling, to say the least. Sure. It's one thing 
for you to face your own, but to know that your mother is fighting and just uh, it's it's the reason I pop out. It's the reason I try and zone out and go into that headspace. Because dealing with it day in, day out is not healthy. Yeah, no, I hear you. I, I totally, but, totally get you on that one. So, so what, but, you, what was that? But as I understand it, each pup has their reason for wanting to be in the headspace, wanting to be who they are and what they are, be it as simple as picking their dog breed to the behavioral traits they associate with being a pup. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what's the one thing you wish you knew before you became a pup? Honestly, I really had to pick something. I wish I knew that some pups are a lot more selfish and cruel about inc inclusivity. That it, I wish I knew that if you didn't fit their narrow-minded idea of what being a pup was, you could be outright banned from participating in certain communities and events and yeah, I'm, and how cruel that is. It it is sad for for a group that preaches inclusivity and then yet. They still do this. It's it's yeah unthinkable. I mean, I don't want to draw the religious comparisons, but it's like when Christians say that they're all about love and tolerance and acceptance, yet tell gay people, "Oh, you're gonna burn in hell for all eternity." Yeah, that's that's not love. That's not tolerance or acceptance. No. That's okay. being a niche, being a club that you want to be exclusive. Exactly. And, and have just yourself. Yeah. And I know you, you get that in every community across the world, public or erotic or whatever, but it's something that needs to be dealt with and people need to take that threat of that seriously. Yeah, uh, no, I agree. I wish I knew how cliquish certain pup communities in certain areas could be. Mm -hmm. So, when you're becoming a pup, I say, like I said before, research, find where the events are, what the scene's like, ask the people who've been in that scene, in that location, mm -hmm. and get their experiences. Okay. Because it's not easy. No, I agree with you. So so what kind of hobbies do you have there in North Carolina? Well, as for my hobbies, it's I get into a lot of video streaming through my YouTube channel. I do a lot of Genshin Impact via my Twitch channel. I am an avid collector, which I see, I see. You guys can probably my Spidey collection. What you can't see is over there I have a Gundam collection, Ranger collection, pop figures. Oh my goodness. As well as as well as my pops over there. Nice. But basically my room is one giant geek wow. haven. That is really cool. But um, aside from the collecting, aside from the game streaming, I'm big into hypnosis. You know, the whole transformation, mind control, not so much cluck like a chicken, dance like a ballerina, bark like a dog, yeah. stage hypnosis, but more the self-help, transformative, be the best version of yourself hypnosis. Okay. Um, I'm also huge into cosplay. As you can probably guess by my uh, I see Yeah. Um, I do a lot of Spider-Man. I do a lot of like cosplay photography, and I have my own website for that, which I will link later on. In the, oh, yeah. Please, please do. I've got nearly a dozen different Spider-Man suits, from the classic Toby and Tom Holland to some 
of my more custom designs, I did a version of Captain America Spider-Man that I particularly love. I've done Peter B. Parker from the Spider-Verse movies. I've got Beast Boy, Winifred Sanderson, Blue Power Ranger, Dean Winchester. Wow. Link from Legend of Zelda, a Genshin Impact original character. I have my lightsabers and my Jedi original character. I've got tons and tons of stuff invested in cosplay. And if I am being honest, I think I might have already spent over a thousand dollars on it. <laughs> Talk uh, about fin financial, uh, what's the word? Irresponsibility. <laughs> hey, it gives you pleasure though, so that's uh, it's worth something. Yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, besides besides all your collecting and everything, do you have any pets? Um, I do, in fact, have a dog, and she is this absolutely gorgeous beagle poodle mix, and it she's so cute. Nice. What what's her name? Her mom. And I debated back and forth for a week, at least, over what to call her. She wanted something a little more classic and Victorian. I, I like the name Ruby because that was the name of, or would have been the name of my first dog before she, yeah. Um, but we settled on Cassandra, or we just basically call her Cassie at this point. See, it's easier, and she makes the joke that she's sassy Cassie, or, or in some cases, gassy Cassie. <laughs> I got it. I got it. <laughs> it's hilarious. So, do you very often in your area have a lot of uh, uh, pup events that go on, or is it uh, not a lot? In my community, the Pup events are held at this bar called um, Flex, and it's essentially your base, basic basement dwellers, perverts, old fat guys that are just... <laughs> and getting into my own experience this year, this is just me. But the guys that frequented are less than forthcoming, less than open about what what they expect from a friendship, relationship, whatever. Mm -hmm. And the guy that ra ran it felt that groping his customers was appropriate behavior, oh. even after they've told him to stop. So, I'm no longer allowed to be part of that club, and by extension, the community surrounding it. So, I can't go to any of the pup events there, and the next nearest that has pup events is all the way in Charlotte, North Carolina, mm -hmm. known as the Woodshed. Okay. Now, lo Mad Love to Woodshed, they've got a good thing going. We got a nice community out there, but it's just too far for me to drive here from Nightdale, just east of Valley, two hours to a bar around 8, 9 p.m., stay until 2 a.m., and then drive home. Oh, sure. It's, there's the gas to consider, there's the cost of admission into the bar, cost of the drinks. What do I do if I'm tired or drunk and just don't feel like driving two and a half hours home? Yeah. The logistics just aren't there for me. I hear you. So, finding pup events and participating in them is a lot harder for me here than, say, San Francisco or Boston or, God forbid, Miami, where the pup communities have a much larger fan base to play with. Sure. So no, I, get, I get you. So, if you could ask the uh, next pup that I interview a specific question about uh, them or the community, what would it be? 
Hmm. I would ask other pups what it is about being a pup that you like most. What about it brings you joy or makes you happy or what's the reasoning for you being in the community that you are? Okay. Um, basically what is being a pup to you? What what about it enjoy? Is it just the getting down on all fours and barking or is there a more deeper spiritual connection with being a canine that appeals to you. Okay. Okay. Now, the question that I've got for you is, is I was going to say it was going to be an easy one, but after you've gone through all your memorabilia that you have there, it might be a little difficult, but I wanted to know, and this actually came from me, um, what is your favorite piece of gear? <sighs> And by gear, you mean you know, like pop your crossbow like, or anything? I would have to say, depending on my mood, it can change. Some days it's my Blue Ranger helmet, other days it's my Beast Boy costume. Okay. Costume because I grew up on Teen Titans, reading the comics, seeing the cartoon, watching the movies. And it's a lot of fun. However, there is one thing I would like to show you. Sure. Here's hoping the battery. I hope the battery for it is charged. Because this thing is, and pardon me dropping the F bomb. <laughs> fucking sweet. You see, there's this convention that I go to every year called GalaxyCon, and that's at the end of July, and there we go, and basically it's a big cosplay convention, pop culture, tons of celebrities go, and tickets are three, four hundred dollars each time just to go, and th this past year I was surprised by my ex with a VIP deluxe pass. Oh, nice. So I got to go. I invited my th then boyfriend who I started dating a week or two after Dummy the Last Guy. And one of the, one of the costumes that I did was <sighs> One second. Get a... Oh, that's nice. Wow. And for those of you into geek culture, you might even recognize the partic particular lightsaber that this happens to be. Mm hmm. Wow. If not, I can tell you. Let me just turn it on. Wow. That is pretty awesome. It is the lightsaber from Jedi Fallen Order. Belonging to Cal Kestis. Now, the cool part about that is that it, I also have multiple blades for that lightsaber. Oh, wow. Yellow. <clears throat> white and purple. Purple. Along with my lightsaber, I have a bunch of these uh, color discs. And I can put those color discs into the saber base to change the color of my saber. Pink, blue, green, wow. red, awesome. purple, whatever. So give me one moment. And I'll set that back. And as I said before, the tickets to the convention are typically three, four hundred dollars. And if you ever want to attend GalaxyCon Raleigh, it's again 
near the end of J- July mm-hmm. in Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay. Uh, I believe last year we had David Tennant, uh, Will Shatner, bunch of, uh, Grant Gustin, Stephen Amell, Barry Bostwick, and a bunch of other very famous names yes. from wrestling, movies, t- and TV. But that particular lightsaber that I showed off was $350. I showed it to my friend who is a huge Star Wars nerd, and I'm like, this company has this amazing lightsaber. It's so cool. Two weeks later, I get a box in the mail. <laughs> I open it up, and I see the saber, and I'm like... That is awesome. And I went off on him. I'm like, I appreciate the gift. Thank you very much. But don't you ever do that to me again. (laughs) It's one thing to show a cool, expensive item to your friend. Mm -hmm. But for them to just outright splurge on a three, four hundred dollar lightsaber for you. Yeah. It's disorienting, to say the least. Oh, I hear you. Well, well, let's say some other pups may want to reach out and uh, and say hi to you and stuff. How would they reach you via social media? Well, I tend to have a very wide selection of uh, sources to media. And one of I go by Dean Mosier on Facebook, Morph Master Outcast. Outcast like the band on Discord. Skater Boy seventeen twenty eight S K eight R B O I one seven two eight for Skype and Mosh Pit Cosplay or Mosh Pit Cosplay Productions on Instagram, Twitter, and several other sites as well. Okay. However, I do have something that will help all the viewers of this interview find me that much easier. There's this company that I found a couple years back called Dot, D-O-T. What they do is they help organize all your socials, all the media links, all the everything, into a single card. All a person has to do is scan the QR code on the back of the card, and they have all your socials in one place. Nice. For For the low cost of... $5. (laughs) Awesome. What I'm going to do here is hold up the card. There we go. So that way anyone who wants to watch this or listen to this or find me now has the QR code for my socials. There we go. All right. Well, hey, any any last words from uh, Alpha Pup Roxas before we uh, jump off of here? I only have one thing, well, two things to say. Guys, please help Twigs out. He's an amazing guy and an am- amazing pup. Secondly, I would like to ask the next pup he interviews this question. What is your favorite superhero oh. and why? Oh. What, whether it be Detective Comics, DC, Marvel, or some other source, be it a character that you've made up, made for yourself or someone you see in your life or that you've heard about being your hero doesn't necessarily have to be characters like Spider-Man or Flash. Mm -hmm. It's who is your hero? Who is your favorite hero? All right. Sounds good. Well, hey, it's been awesome getting to talk to you and everything. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day today. And uh, we'll be talking again soon. You as well, Twigs. All right. 